Dr. Narissa Bauer, welcome. Thank you for having me, Dr. Renzel. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm honored to, to have this time with you. Um, I love what you're doing, helping all little people out there and helping people who help little people. So tell me about your coaching for pediatricians, um, how you're supporting pediatricians and all the important work that they do. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll answer that question by go, going back just a teeny bit sure. to just give viewers a, um, an idea of who I am. So Absolutely. I'm a behavioral pediatrician by training, and I sort of have had a uh, um, kind of a different route to getting to where I am. I did a general pediatrics residency in San Diego, and then I did an extra clinical year of developmental behavioral pediatrics before it was board certified. Uh, before it was a board certified specialty, uh, with Dr. Marty Stein, and then I went on to do a master's of public health at the University of Washington, um, where I did some research looking at intimate partner violence and bullying in children. Um, okay. So Right. Um, and then I got my first faculty position at Indiana University, where I was tasked to uh, start a developmental behavioral rotation and start a behavioral clinic. Um, and uh, that's kind of where I got my start was actually in Seattle, because when I was in Seattle, I started a foster care clinic. And um, as you know, many of those children have a lot of behavioral issues. And I realized because I didn't have my own kids and I knew that, you know, oftentimes these problems did not need medication. Like sometimes they did, but most of the time it was parenting support. And I thought, oh right. my gosh, I have no idea how to support these parents, you know, and you, right. you want to prevent disruption from placement. And, and I just was feeling very inadequate. And so what I did was I searched the community and thank goodness I happened to find uh, a woman, Carolyn Webster Strand, who eventually became my mentor and a good friend. She's the developer of the Incredible Years um, evidence-based parenting curricula. At the time, it was already evidence. There was a lot of research on it for use with children who have oppositional defiant disorder and conduct disorder. Okay. Um, but when I reached out to her, she just happened to have landed a grant from SAMHSA to adapt it for use with kids with ADHD. So oh. she said, well, the best way to learn my program is to participate. And I know you don't have kids yet, but let's just do it. So oh. I did that. It was a 22 week course, Tuesday oh. nights, parents yeah. in one room, kids in another. She oh, would video record it. Mm -hmm. And then she also invited me afterwards, um, like in between those sessions to meet with her and her clinical or her, sorry, her group facilitators to review videotapes. And basically, I learned not just the content, but how she was thinking and how she facilitated nice. these groups. I mean, yeah. I couldn't have asked for a better training, right. right? Oh, that's amazing. Right. And then afterwards, I realized <clears throat> pediatricians are not taught this in this systematic way. It's usually in, in medicine where we do see one, do one, teach one. But for right, parenting, right. that doesn't really work well Yeah. Um, because there's not a one-size-fits-all approach. So... Um, Dr. Webster Stratton asked me to write a review paper with her for current um, current articles in pediatrics. And we talked about prevention of behavior problems in primary care. And then with her blessing, I worked with her to adapt her program that was for parents, but instead to adapt it to teach residents how to coach parents oh, nice. on integrating yeah. it into well child visits. Nice. So, so Amazing. I began doing that at the um, medical school. I began presenting it at conferences nationally, um, and it was a lot of fun because pediatricians are asked these questions, and yet nobody was doing it in a systematic way. So, yeah. you know, we were doing, you know, we were teaching all about like how to coach parents on child-directed play, praise, timeout, tangible rewards, consequences, all of those different things mm -hmm. that pediatricians should feel comfortable talking about. Um, so, so fast forward, you know, I still to this day, I'm involved in a lot of efforts with the American Academy of Pediatrics to get this information out. We just completed, nice. uh, we're working on and it will be completed soon an equip module for uh, parenting and primary care. So that way, you know, pediatricians who need MOC credit can go through that course and, and complete it. Um, nice. but, uh, since I've left academia um, in December of 2018, I've also begun um, kind of 
talking with other physicians out there who are in private practice or entrepreneurs and want to launch into parenting. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've been slowly uh, taking on some clients to help kind of figure out what is their vision for how they want to, you know, use this body of knowledge, whether it be to develop a course or develop it into their workflow in their practice, and right. then and then filling in the gaps and working with them so that they can achieve that goal. Amazing. Such a resource. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm a mom of four and I can't imagine, you know, uh, my sister has four kids. We all, you know, we've just, you know, people that I know, of course, you you look for resources and you hope to find it. And sometimes if it's too hard to find it, you just keep going, right? You just think, okay, yes. I guess I just have to kind of keep going or, or deal with the, you know, the school will help as much as they can. But yeah, so a lot of folks get bounced between or, you know, search between their medical providers and their school and then anyone in their community that could help them. So I love that you're providing these resources and the people you've worked with. I love yes. that all these families are being supported in new ways by residents learning, um, that, you know, learning at least the basics of how to, to, to support the parents. That's right. amazing. And how to talk about it. Right. I mean, I think there's right. this, I, I oftentimes heard from residents who said, you know, gone through our rotation and they're like, the parents are like, do you have kids? And, they're, and some right. of them are like, no, I don't. So of course that sort of leaves, you know, like a, you know, like the, the resident feels inadequate to be providing sure. this, mm -hmm. but I told, I tell them, I'm like, Hey, listen, you have seen to this date, so many kids Right. You are an expert. If you don't right, have to right. be a parent yourself, but you know right. enough about child development and oh and how to take care of kids that you can do this. But you know, I mean, I understand that parents like to be able to relate to somebody yes. who kind of walked in their shoes. Um, but you know, I think just like we teach residents how to take care and delineate like sick from not sick or, you know, an as right. asthma exacerbation that needs to be, you know, uh, admitted versus not, you know, mm -hmm. it's just one of those things that we're taking care of kids health. And it's a huge part of promoting positive social emotional growth, as well as, you know, nurturing that parent child interaction. Wonderful. So what pediatricians should, should reach out to you? Like what, you know, what are they, you know, kind of bumping into if they want to learn more about, is it ADHD mostly, or what would you say? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I think um, I've certainly applied these parenting concepts across the board, you know, to anxiety, ADHD, and just general well child visits. But I would say in general, those physicians who are in private practice, because there's such a need, I mean, especially if anything, COVID has amplified the fact that parents, when they get in that office, they want, they're, they're struggling because their kids are struggling right now. Mm -hmm. And just how to help provide that guidance uh, and what to say or how to say it, how to screen for things, how to work this all. So it's seamless in your workflow. So mm -hmm. for those pediatricians who are getting a lot of those questions and don't feel like they've had adequate training in this area, they can mm -hmm. reach out to me. Um, and then also, um, you know, anybody who is an entrepreneur and wants to sort of, you know, break out and offer programs or classes or, you know, uh, their own coaching business mm -hmm. uh, revolving around parenting. Um, I'm certainly, I love to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, I said, parenting is not a one size fits all approach. So um, that's where the magic happens is sort of thinking about like how to make this work in whatever setting you're in. Because I know for a long time, it's been really terrible reimbursement for this type of work, you know, especially okay. in very busy pediatric clinics, um, but it's so needed. And so um, I've been uh, involved in ongoing efforts with the academy to kind of figure out and get payers to pay for this type of work. It's so important and so needed. And I think that pediatricians recognize that and they're really wanting to continue to do it regardless of if they're paid. I mean, yes, you need to pay attention to the bottom line, but mm -hmm. in the end, the patients need what they need. Mm -hmm. um, and so just one quick plug for the American Academy of Pediatrics. I'm the chairperson of the STAR Center uh, Technical Assistance Committee. STAR stands for Screening Technical Assistance and Resource Center. And we have resources on there. So if you're interested in screening for developmental delay, maternal depression, social determinants of health, we have videos, we have MOC credit, we have implementation um, resources. We have a podcast that I host with um, called the... Um, uh, pediatric care, standing for um, 
Childhood Adversity and Resilience Education. So that's a podcast for pediatricians Uh and providers to learn more and dive deeper into topics. And then we also are going to start office hours. um, So that way, if practices have questions about all of these different things and how to make it work, they can tap into that resource too. Oh my gosh, you are just (laughs) treasure trove of (laughs) so many gifts for all these folks who are in the trenches, huh? Yeah, no, it's so needed. And, uh, you know, just knowing where to go for reliable resources, I think is important. So thank you for the opportunity for me to share this. Oh my gosh, I love learning about all that you're up to. That's amazing. (laughs) So American Academy of Peds, and they can listen to the podcast is a good start and then reach out to you if they want to any entrepreneur or pediatrician or someone who wants to, you know, build more resources for parents. Yes. Parents and yeah. Yes. I love that because then that's so strategic because then if the parents really feel good and strong about that, they can share it. And they, you know, I feel like when the kids have more tools, um, you know, life tools, then they shine and it's just, it's wonderful. So yes. thank you for all that you do. <laughs> and we'll put all your links in the, in the show notes. Great. Thank you so okay. much. I'm wonderful. Stay well.